Hello, I'm Lucas Horrocks, and welcome to my Numidia faction guide for Rome Total War. Now, Numidia is possibly one of the hardest factions to play as. In fact, if you go online and speak to people and ask them what is the most difficult faction, a lot of people will say Numidia, and that's basically because of their weak units. But there are several things that are difficult about Numidia. One of the main things being economy and possibly starting position as well, I don't know. Some people would consider that. So the Numidia is described as light desert infantry and good cavalry, including camel mounted specialists. Yeah, it doesn't sound that amazing, and it probably isn't. And that's exactly what we're going to look at first. But Numidia is traditionally a non playable faction, so you have to unlock it using the data files, uh, which you can look at on the internet for tutorials for. But long story short, Numidia start in this region around here in North Africa. And they also have one settlement over here as well, bordering Egypt. So it's sort of spread out over a little bit, with Carthage in between. But the main settlements are over here, I'd say. Wouldn't worry too much about this region first. Okay, so this is Numidia. Now, first of all, our peasants. I've said this many times, they're pretty useless. I only use them just to like fill out garrisons if the towns are unhappy. But in combat, they're pretty much useless. Next up, desert infantry. Now, they look a bit like eastern infantry, but they're better. So, actually... Looking at this right now, I don't even think Numidian units are that bad. I think they're pretty decent. And Desert Infantry, are, they're basically significantly better versions of Eastern Infantry. Uh, they are spearmen, but they are good against fighting cavalry, obviously, like most spearmen. They have a good defence, good attack, and a good morale. Now, the Eastern Infantry have a poor morale, so that is the main difference. The high, higher defence and the higher morale makes De Desert Infantry a pretty good unit, just to maybe use on the flanks to protect against cavalry charges from the opposition. Next up, Numidian Legionaries. Now, again, this is a pretty decent unit. They sort of remind me of, I don't know, Principes or, um, you know, early uh, post-Marian Roman units. They're not quite as good as Urban Cohort, but they are similar to, you know, Roman Legionaries. Attack of 7, defense of 16 is pretty high, and a missile attack of 11. They sort of have the, the little, um, sort of Pelum, I don't know if they'd call them Pelum as well, but they have a missile weapon. It's sort of like a very small spear. They are well armoured, which is good, and they have good stamina as well. So, again, this is a quite a diverse unit because they've got the missile attack and they've got a good melee attack and defence as well. So, they can certainly do a job. And, yeah, I find it odd how people say that Numidia has a terrible start on army. I don't think it does. I would say the economy is more of an issue with Numidia, which we'll talk about in a second. Next up, Slingers. I don't rate Slingers that much, and I don't rate um, Javelinmen. They're both very similar. In fact, they both have exactly the same stats, apart from the Javelinmen have a slightly higher missile attack. I, I don't rate either of these two units that much. I much prefer Archers, personally. They have a better missile attack, but they're not quite as good in the melee. But again, what do you, you don't use skirmishes in the melee. You shouldn't anyway. So, yeah, I would definitely use Archers all day, but they aren't as quite as fast-moving, which is why these two units are probably preferable to some people, just not me. Now the cavalry. The long shield cavalry is pretty decent. Good morale, which is nice. Any unit that has good morale is a good unit in my opinion. And they are spears. They spear uh, cavalry with a light, light cavalry. So they are fast moving basically with good morale. They're good for sort of mopping up troops if they're fleeing the battlefield or if you're flanking someone and you just want to slam into the side of a unit that's pinned up against your unit these are perfectly good for doing that so yeah I rate long shield cavalry I don't rate new midian camel riders I personally hate camels in this game I think the only reason they are good in any sense is they scare horses so they are a good way to combat traditional cavalry but other than that I find them pretty slow in comparison to horses they're pretty strong uh, pretty weak in comparison their defence and attack's okay, these ones, and they have good morale, so they're o they're okay. But yeah, I just would, I would choose the cavalry all day, unless I want to particularly scare a group of horses. Next up, general's bodyguard, pretty standard unit, uh, eleven attack and fourteen defence, pretty standard bodyguard unit that is. Good morale and good stamina, of course. This is the pre-Marian general, and then the post-Marian general is a slight improvement, mainly on the defence. But they also are very well armoured. So yeah, basically they're the same, but they're much better defensively. So they're going to last a lot longer. Your general's going to be a lot safer. And next up, this is the unit you'll probably be using most at the beginning. It's the Numidian Cavalry. Attack of 6 and defence of 8. In the melee, they're okay. They'll actually do a little bit of a good job. But the missile attack of 9 is quite nice. And they are very fast moving. They wear enemies down. 
they can reach you, but you can't reach them. They're quite annoying to play against. Large amounts of these guys can take on Roman units. That's for sure. So yeah, these probably will be used a lot by you in the early game if you're playing as Numidia. Onagers are relatively standard, I've talked about them before. And then Mercenary War Elephants, one of the few factions that can recruit War Elephants if they have the resource nearby. They have an attack of 6, and they have a defense of 16, with a missile attack as well. And they're sort of a shock troop, I suppose. They're used to frighten animals, and they have good morale, they're quite hard to take down. And they can cause havoc, basically. That's that's what the elephants use for. They're good if you use them tactically, but they have an incredibly high upkeep, and they're high to recruit in the first place. So, you know, you have to sort of take that into consideration. But it's quite a fun unit to have, at least. All right, now that's done, we're going to have a look at the faction introduction video for New Media. It's a generic video, I believe, because they never made a video for New Media because it's not meant to be a playable faction. So, but I'll show it to you anyway, just in case you're interested. Right, so this is the Numidian starting position, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to to show you how, you know, what's nearby. I'm going to uh, toggle the fog of war, turn it off basically, just so I can show you what's around, because it's hard to say, oh, okay, well, the Spanish are here, and you can't even see where their settlements are, so I'll just quickly do that. Obviously, I wouldn't normally play the game like this, it's just for demonstration purposes. So, you start off with four settlements, which sounds decent. And they all, so a lot of them border the Mediterranean, so they're not too bad. You have Etinji here, I'm not sure of the pronunciation, but it's a small town here. I wouldn't bother attacking the Spanish first. That's something I'll say straight off, but we'll talk about that in a minute. You have an important settlement, which is Kieta, over here. This is going to be a sort of launch pad for attacks. This settlement isn't that amazing, Dimidi. And there's a settlement down here, which I wouldn't even bother about, Nept. And then you finally have the fourth settlement, is Siwa down here as well. So, the, basically, the strategy, well, well, let's have a look at your starting armies. You have this general and three Numidian cavalry. Now, I wouldn't even bother going for Spain. You don't even have a ship to get onto the mainland. Instead, what I would focus on first is the Carthaginians. Take Carthage first, because it's a really good place for the economy. The Numidian economy is pretty bad. You will end up in debt pretty quickly unless you start taking settlements. So Carthage is one of my first targets. Four units is not too much to deal with, so I would start moving units towards that direction. First of all from Kirta really, where you have a general, Syfax, and two javelinmen and a slinger. Move them over to Carthage, and you should be able to take Carthage with that. You can recruit another unit if you if you will need to, but bear in mind you've got another army out here as well, which is the cavalry and the javelinmen. All that lot should be able to take Carthage. Once you've done that, Thapsus is a good place to take as well. These places border the Mediterranean. They've got lots of trade routes. Really good settlements to have. And again, only four garrison. It's not that much to take. Once you've taken those two, might take a little bit of a while. Don't bother with Sicily yet. I wouldn't. I would take Lepkis Magna next. That's, you know, you need to secure these three settlements. Now, once you've done that, don't bother about Nept, as I said. And don't bother about Spain. I would probably go for Corsica if it's not taken. Oh, sorry, Sardinia, that is. Sardinia, if that's not taken, that's Carolus, Corsica is the one up north, and Parma as well, because again, economy, if you've got the navy to do that. 
And then at that point, once you've built a decent army, if the Scipio haven't taken Lily Byam, definitely take Lily Byam. You want to get to Lily Byam before the Scipio do. That's true. And they normally take quite a while to get to Lily Byam, and they'll go for Syracuse first. So you should have plenty of time to leave Lily Byam in the hands of the Carthaginians. But before the Scipio get it, you've got to go for Lily Byam. At which point, you should have a decent economy to start building up an army in Siwa. And if you're going to attack Egypt, the first assessment you want to go for is Memphis. The reason is, when you are attacking the Egyptian assessments, and I've noticed this before when I played as a Scipio, uh, you, it's really hard to maintain public order. So having the pyramids at Giza are so important. The pyramids at Giza are so important because they have a population loyalty bonus to all Egyptian culture places. That's Thebes, Alexandria, Memphis, all of these settlements around here will have a, a happiness boost because you've got the Pyramids of Giza. So Memphis is important, then Alexandria because the lighthouse is quite good and it's on the Mediterranean border and then I'd go for Thebes. Secure these three first before you head over to the Middle East. As for Cyrene, that's a small settlement up here. It's not that good, but if you really have a strong urge to take it, Honestly, halfway through the game, this will still probably be a rebel settlement. It's one of the few settlements that seems to never get taken. This one, then is Skyra up here, never seems to get taken. And um, these ones don't often that much, but they will at some point. And the one in Ireland as well, they never seem to get taken by the other factions. So basically, go for the Carthaginians first, make sure you secure this area. I wouldn't go for the Egyptians too quickly, they won't focus on you. They'll expand in this direction, taking rebel settlements and fighting the Seleucids. Then they're unlikely to come in this direction. You're incredibly unlucky if they do. Once once they've moved their resources out of this area into the Middle East, then it's time to strike against Memphis, then Alexandria, and then Thebes. The Carthaginians are relatively weak and they're spread out their force, so taking Carthage and Thapsus early on is vital, and then there's only a small rebel settlement in your way securing the north coast of Africa. And you've got a lot of settlements on the Mediterranean which can trade, which is good. So that's what I'd recommend. Next up, we will have a look at the buildings, which you can get. The temples, basically. That's the only unique buildings to the Numidians, I believe. So if I can just click on a Numidian town, we will be able to find that out. Kirta, for example. So, relatively generic units for the African factions, the North African factions. You can law enforcement is quite a good one. It's unique to these factions in the Middle East and in North Africa. Now, the temples. There's three temples. There is Tanit, Baal, and Milquart. I believe that's pronounced. I'm not sure. We're going to have a look at the fourth tier, the awesome temple, the highest of each level, just so you can see the final benefits of choosing each religion. First of all, Tanit. Public order bonus of 20%, improved farms, improved food production, plus 4. That's pretty good. That means you're going to get a lot of income from farming, and it means that the population growth is going to be high. So, Tanit is good. It's a good one to have early on as well, because it gets you money and it gets you population booming, which means you can upgrade your settlements and get to the higher tier units quicker. So Tanit is a good one at the beginning. Bar has it's just public order happiness, basically. It's public order bonuses the whole way. See, I, I wouldn't bother that too much. If you're having trouble with public order, yeah, okay, maybe go for Bar, but really wouldn't recommend it. And Milquart is quite a good one for the economy as well because of the increase in tradable goods, which you get. And you get that at all stages. And also with the happiness bonus. So I would say Tanit is the best one, then Milquart, and then probably Baal. That's what I'd say. So that's all I've really got to say about New Midians. It's actually not too difficult campaign as long as you get started quickly. If you hang around too long, then yet yeah, you'll get into debt and you'll have terrible units and you won't be able to succeed. But you've got access to the Mediterranean easily, really, here. Taking these settlements are vital. These settlements are isolated, so Palma and Carolus shouldn't be too difficult to take. It's then dealing with the Scipii and the Egyptians that's going to be the problem. But if you nip that, that problem in the bud, it shouldn't be too difficult. It shouldn't be too difficult. You've got some good units, and that's that's basically all the advice I've got to give. I wouldn't bother with Spain. I tried to conquer Spain one time, and it's just too much effort to take all these settlements, and you don't even get a lot out of them. They're all in debt, and then they all want to rebel against you anyway because they hate you. Instead, just go for these settlements. It's a lot easier to maintain the public order, particularly in Egypt with the pyramids of Giza. So, thank you very much for watching. That's my advice on Numidia, and I will see you around.